terms of wives. Now, Limerick hit four more than Cork, so the Corkmen certainly can't blame that aspect of their game for their defeat. Now, again, not much in it in terms of frees conceded. In fact, for such a hectic game, the level of fouling was relatively low. And again, as regards scoring chances, things worked out pretty even. Limerick converted 18 from 38, Cork scored 15 from 31, so they both work out with more or less a 50% success rate. Well now, Kieran Barr was involved in championship action himself this afternoon, but he's been watching a video of that match in Limerick. Kieran, to just talk to you briefly about that. Um, I know you tip Cork in the championship, but were you surprised to see Limerick win that one today? Um, I was, but like, I seen the interviews there afterwards, you know, it, it's, it's, I met Ger Hegarty uh, at a bank uh, hurling match and he played very well at that game and he, he said that he was very fit and that he was training very hard and that he was hoping to get back into the, the Limerick team and obviously he's, he's probably been an example to them coming back from a very serious injury and they hurled very well and looked like a very fit team mm -hmm. and a team with a mission, a mm -hmm. driven team and that's something that Limerick teams might not have had in the past whereas Cork, you know, if a team scores 4-11 in a game you'd expect to win it so, you know, it's a, it's a good team to beat you when you score 4-11 so they probably haven't got a lot of questions they look at themselves and say well what did we do wrong they mm -hmm. didn't do a whole lot wrong they mm -hmm. played very well although you've only seen the game as you said on video one thing that would have struck you about it is that cork were flying for the first 10 or 15 minutes and it looks so easy any mm -hmm. chance that they started to pull up do you think and just say well it's done now it's a possibility like they were they were too forward to not too up and and um, it's a possibility that they said to themselves uh you know we have this this is going to be easy we're just going to walk through this game but i actually don't think that's the case i think when you're hitting goals like that and then suddenly you're hit by a number of goals they went from two four to not two up to three five to two four down mm -hmm. and they were they were probably knocked out of their completely out of their rhythm yeah and that's all credit to limerick i don't think it's a fault of corks i mm -hmm. think they were just rocked by goals and goals in championship games can make all the difference to teams morale and momentum during the game Interestingly enough, there was eight goals in the match today, and despite that, both goalkeepers played quite well, particularly Joe Quaid uh, playing in the Limerick goal, who made some marvellous saves. We picked out just one or two yeah. to have a look at here. So this, this, this is a very good save because it's coming through a crowd of players, and I don't think he hit the ball particularly well, and it was probably looking for a point. But he went, uh, you know, he was going for a point, but the goalkeeper actually did the right thing. You always have a goal uh, to make the save, and you always do as best you can. Um, this is another save from him, again through a crowd of players, and it's actually a better save because he's having to dive right across his goal and make, a, uh, make an outstanding save and was very unfortunate. You know, some loose mark in there at the mm -hmm. back and the ball was in the back of the net. I don't think that was his fault. But you see here from behind, that's uh, McCarthy getting the ball and driving it across and in front of him with two players in front of him. And it was a, an outstanding save by a young man in his first championship match, fourth class. Yeah. There were some very big displays today for Limerick. There had to be, I suppose, if they were going to, to overturn Cork. Joe Quaid was one of them. Yeah. Gary Kirby played very well. Yeah. But probably in the middle of the field, Kieran Kerry, to me, was, was the man who, who sort of really inspired the thing. Yeah, I was listening to the radio on the way back, and, and everyone uh, on the radio was saying that this guy had an outstanding game. And when I'd seen it in, in, in the video, he was winning ball and using it intelligently. Now, because he's a, a, a centre-back converted then into a forward, mm -hmm. He knows where to find players, he knows to use the ball properly and not just to, now he's coasting through two or three court guys and driving at them. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need in championship matches. You need fellas to take the initiative and to drive through defences. And then people have to come to you. And once they've come to you, loose men will, will open up. And it's the intelligent player and the fella who's on his game who will find the loose players. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very easy just to keep running there and hit the ball straight sure. into the forward line and think, that's my job yeah, done. Yeah. But Kerry was looking for other players and, and they played very well. Mm -hmm. Just looking at some of the phone calls we've got, John Barry, who actually comes from Newry, uh, rang to just congratulate Limerick on their win today. Uh, a Limerick caller wanted to congratulate them as well. And he uh, says, what does Kieran Barr think now that Cork have been beaten? Because he would have tipped them in the championship. Yeah, well, like, it, this is this thing about tipping. Like, it's, it's like yes. back in horses, as I said to Colin <laughs> last week. Look, I, I actually, in, in reality and tipping the thing, I'm not that close to any of the teams involved here, so I can't tell you who's going well and who's going bad. I'm going on previous form and on previous history. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to turn around and tip Limerick because they're all probably praying tonight that I don't say they're <laughs> going to win the Munster Championship. But I would say that it's between, probably between Limerick and Clare, but Kerry are a strong team, physically strong team, and Waterford I know nothing about. Mm. So I can't really make a prediction, sure. and it's that's not, unfair to it, yeah, ask me. But it's well. not just as simple as it being down to either Clare or Limerick, obviously, in the championship it's there. Not. Well, all right, now we're going to come to our Man of the Match selection uh, from that game today, and a reminder that each of our winners this summer will receive a gold watch. And our recipient from this match is, well, we talked about him a moment ago, Kieran Carey of Limerick. Indeed, there were many fine performances from both sides today, but the most inspired display throughout the 70 minutes undoubtedly came from the Limerick midfielder. So that's our Man of the Match, Kieran Carey. Now elsewhere in hurling, uh, champion.